In this video, we are going to be talking about orders, like actual orders to get in the market. And I'm going to go on a paper trade account for this. Um, and you have to understand orders to get in the market. So there's, there's pretty much um, four types of orders. There's, well, there's three, I guess. I mean, there's a market, there's a limit, and there's a stop order. So... The market has something called a spread. And basically this red button um, and this blue button in between this is spread. So this is at 18237.50. This is at 18238.50.25. Well, so right now, what's the, what's the difference? Well, this is a difference about 0.50, which is about I'm going to call that 50 cents for now, even though it's not truly really 50 cents. Um, but we'll just say 50 cents for now, which is would be the spread. Why is that the spread? Because it's the difference between the sell price and the buy price. Okay. And often if I want to get in and I want to get filled and I click buy here, they're not going like this is this price is lower than what this is. So when I click buy right here, they fill me exactly 18237.50 right here. They're not going to fill me at 18237, which um, I wish they did. Sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll fill you lower. But if you're buying here, they're going to fill you right where you got in at. Or again, sometimes like, remember, this is paper trading. If you use like a really bad broker from like another country, these spreads can be like $5 apart. Like this could be 36 and this could be like 40 and you just have to hope and pray and hope you get a good fill because sometimes what will happen is you'll buy. So you'll buy, but the spread is so bad where even though it says price is at 18237.25 or whatever, like you could literally get filled up here. And that's what sucks because let's say the, uh, let's say this red is 1800 and let's say the blue is 18005. This means you could literally get filled. Like, this means like the spread is so bad where if you got filled at eighteen thousand five, that might not be the true price. Like, you you might already be red in the position if you're trying to buy because, um, again, there's there's buyers, there's gonna be buyers at eighteen thousand trying to get filled. There's gonna be sellers right here trying to get filled, and it just it causes this. Um, ripple or I don't know how to explain this, but it causes just this gap. And if you, if you get in right here, price tends not to be there. Price is actually really at like 18,000, let's say 18,002.5. So meanwhile, because this is the spread right here where there's buyers willing to buy here and sellers willing, willing to sell it here. You might get filled right here, or you might get filled at eighteen thousand five. Meanwhile, price is actually right here. So again, remember this red button means there are buyers trying to get in here. Okay, so there's literally people placing their order there. So if I just um exit out, right? There's literally people trying to place order down here, and there's people trying to place order up here. Again, on a really, really bad broker, there, you're going to see a spread like this where there's going to be a million orders here and a million orders here. And and if you market buy in between these, you can get a really bad fill and you're already going to be right in the position. So you want the spread as tight as possible. This would like this would be an example of a tight spread right here. So this is super tight. Right here, this is like a really tight spread. So... Even if I get filled here, I mean, it's still a small difference. So, um, and see how I get filled right there. I get filled right where I'm at. That's just, it's because the spread is so low. So, uh, this is a little complicated to understand. I'm not going to lie, but remember this red button are basically where price is right now. There's going to be buyers sitting here and sellers sitting here and Again, for NQ, what I trade is very liquid. And all very liquid means is there's a lot of people buying and selling. 
there's so many people buying and selling that you can get filled relatively quickly. Um, it's not like you're going to have to wait 10 minutes for someone to buy your contract. Okay. You're going to get filled right away. Um, you're not going to like, there's literally brokers where they won't fill you for like 30 seconds because there's just not volume. There's not liquidity. There's not, it's not liquid at all. Um, and if you come from options, if you ever look at like a really out of the money contract, um, and, and options, like there's out of the money contracts that have like no volume. And even if you put an order in to buy, you're just not going to get filled. It's just, it's so bad sometimes. So, um, yeah, this is basically what the spread is. So you're going to have a lot of bias here. And if I show you like an example of, let me show you an example of like a Dom that kind of, um, shows you this. So this is an example of a Dom. It's called depth of market. And this is let, this is the example price. Now, do you see how there's a lot of numbers here? Like there's 93, whatever. I can't read that. 90, 85, and less numbers up here. And do you see how there's 97, 93, 107, and then it kind of gets lower. There is 213 right here, so it's not the greatest example. Let me check here. Um, so, I mean, not the greatest example, but basically what this means is if I want to get in where price is and I want to buy, if I put in an order right here, let's say I put in an order 2034, there's likely not going to be any sellers to give you that position because the sellers are trying to sell for a higher price. They're not trying to give you a, a, a good position right here. So if I put a buy here, typically what will happen is you'll have to wait for more people or more sellers to come down there. So same thing. Like if I put a sell limit up here, it's just not going to let me short. Okay. It's not going to let me take a sell limit. We need more buyers to be able to like willing to, sell at this price okay and right now price is not there so again sellers are not going to be able to sell at that price so uh, that's kind of how that works all right now what a market order is and this is where i'm going to explain the first order what a market order is is if i just click this red button or click this blue button it's saying buy market and sell market all market order is, is it's going to fill me in the middle wherever there's like, wherever there's the first seller. Okay. So if I put in a market order, it's not going to actually put me at this price. It's going to put me at the price, the first price where someone's willing to sell me the contract. So the first seller is at 2034.75. So it's going to fill me here. If I put in a market order, it's not going to fill me down here. These are all limit orders. These are a if price comes down here and there's more sellers willing to buy here, then it will fill me here. But a market order will generally just fill you somewhere right here because there's already sellers willing to sell there. So again, if I take a sell limit right here, all right, it's going to fill me basically in the middle where people are trying to buy. And it, it's really easy to identify by looking at this because uh, this is more visual. Um, Again, same thing with like, um, let's see if there's another example here. <clears throat> same thing with right here. So here's price, here's buyers, and here's, here's sellers. Okay. Now, like I said, if you're trying to get in and you click market buy or market sell, they're all going to be where there's already buyers and sellers right now. Let me just, I'm going to draw like a few different numbers. Okay. For like 2001, this should be a better representation too. Again, for anyone confused, this is really hard to explain. And this is something that took me a while to understand. I'm not going to lie. Um, so let's say this is what, let's say there's a bunch of orders here. Okay. So let's say this is 18,005, 
18,000. Okay, so let's say it's like that. Oh, unfortunately, I have to do six here. Five here. I don't know what this is doing. Okay, we're just going to do this. Okay, so this is where there's sellers here. So let's say there's sellers here. Someone trying to put an order here. Someone trying to put an order here. Someone trying to put an order here. And let's say there's bias here, bias here, bias here, bias here. So we got a bunch of people trying to buy at this level, 18,003, 18,002. But there's no buyers or sellers willing to buy here. And there's no sellers or there's no buyers willing to buy here and no sellers willing to sell here. So if I mark it in and I click market buy, I'm not going to get filled here because there's no one trying to actually sell here. The first seller is at 18,006. So if I click market buy, it's going to put me in at 18,006. That's a good way to explain it. After I see, like, after listening to myself explain that, that's a really good way. So when I click market buy here, it's not going to fill me here because no one's willing to sell here. The first seller is willing to sell up here. And that's why spreads are so important. This is actually a $3 spread. There's $3 difference of where the first person wants to sell and buy and where they meet. Like I said, this is literally a 50 cent spread. So I can market buy here at 41.25 and it'll put me in almost there or even like 50 cents higher because this is where the first seller is willing to sell me the contract, which 50 cents is not that much of a difference technically. But again, now, what if it was like this? What if there was buyers here and sellers here? Well, if I market buy, I'm probably going to get filled here because there's not sellers at 18,004. There's sellers at 18,005, and there's buyers at 18,004. But because these don't line up, then, yeah. So if I market order, I'd basically be getting in here. This would be market order, market order, market order, market order for buying. If I sold market order, right, and I'm selling 18,005, and there's no buy markets right here, then I'm going to get filled at 18,004 because this is where the first person's going to buy. Now, what do I mean when you get lucky? Sometimes you can sell market at 18,005 and there will be other buyers trying to market buy as well. So if there is someone trying to market buy, their limit, like they could be buying 18,005. So if you do market sell, you could get someone contract who is trying to buy here and you could actually get filled at 18,005 and that's what I consider a lucky fill because you're basically buying someone else's market order or selling someone else's market order so that's kind of how that works and again the lower the spread the better if, if there's like a if the spread looks like this remember you're never going to get filled at 18,001 if there's buyers at 18,001 but not 18,002 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and you buy a market, you're going to get filled way up here. You're not going to get filled here. And you're already going to be down. You're already going to be down $7 because price is truly going to be like right here. All right. It's not going to be up here. It's, it's imagine, imagine there's a, there's a balance. So if I, if price is at eight, if, if there's a buy order at 18,001 and there's a buy order at eight, 18,008, where's the middle of that? One, two, three. One, two, three. So technically the middle would be these two prices. Now what's the middle of that? Well, the middle of that is 18,004.5. So this is technically where price would truly be at. So if I got filled and I click buy market, even though price was at 18,001, I'd be getting filled here. And because of the spread, I'd already be down $3.50. So just make sure it's a tight spread. Now, you're not going to actually have this issue with NQ if you trade on trade Ovate or if you trade on paper trading, whatever. This will not be an issue. I'm just saying there's brokers in like these different countries that are just horrible spreads. And when you get filled, you're getting filled way up here. When, and meanwhile, in reality, price is down here. So that's kind of what a market order is. Now, a limit order is you will get filled typically where you put your limit. So a limit order is all it is is you click this plus button. And you can click create an order. And again, this is a market order. So it fills you wherever. Now, 
this is a limit order. So a limit order, you click buy, and you can basically place a limit here, and it's going to get you in at that price. Okay. Now, if I place a market order here, oops, if I place a market order here, watch this, buy one market. It's just going to fill me where price is now. So you want to put, if you want to get filled at a lower price, put a limit here. And if price comes down and ticks it, that means you're going to get filled and you're probably going to get a pretty good fill. You're not going to get filled at like a way higher price. So how might you get filled at a limit order? Well, if I put a limit order at, let's say, 18003 so I put a limit order right here, and price is right here, you're not going to get filled, but if there's more sellers willing to sell here, and then they're like, oh, well, no one's buying my contract. I'm going to sell here instead. Oh, no one's buying my contract. I'm going to buy here instead. Oh, no one's buying my contract. I'm going to buy here instead. Oh, no one's buying my contract. Finally, someone there's someone willing to buy my contract and that's where you're going to get filled because you're willing to buy there so if price comes down to the level you're going to get filled because that's where you put your limit order um and it's just it a limit is getting fill, filled at the price you want market is getting filled wherever there's a seller so to recap a limit is getting filled exactly where you want a market order is getting filled wherever that first buyer seller is so like i said there might, if you're trying to buy at 18,004, there might not be sellers willing to sell you contract here. They might be at 18,006, so you'll get filled at 18,006 instead. But the limit, you'll get filled at 18,004 if there's more sellers willing to bring price down. Okay. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and those are the two important um, orders you should understand to go to the market. Now, I typically market order because the spread is so low and on Q, but if you are trading like a 2020, um, no, I don't want to go over that yet. Uh, there is times where like you would use a limit and you would use a market. So for example, let's say, let's say I see this resistance where price rejects it a lot. Um, and I go into replay mode. I'll put a limit order up here in case price touches it so play it play it play it play it play it okay there's there's buyers willing to short or there's buyers willing to sell me with their position here i'm going to take a sell my limit order gets filled up here i get a really precise entry and then we go down so that's an example of when you use a limit order is if you think we're going to reject somewhere and you kind of want to wait for price to get there because if you take a market sell right here your market selling right here. You're not actually waiting for price to get to that level. And you want to wait for price to get to the level to take a sell. And sometimes if you want to step away from the screen, whatever, you just place a limit order right here. And if you get filled, you get filled. If you don't get filled, that sucks. Okay. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so that's really when you'd use a uh, limit order. Um, Now, the last word I want to talk about is going to be a stop order. So this is going to tie to support and resistance. Okay. So what a stop order is, it's basically an order where if I click create an order and do a stop loss, because I'm in a long position right now or because I bought, you have to use a sell stop. Meaning if price hits a certain level, you will get out of the position. So it's kind of like a safeguard, meaning like if you're wrong, it's going to get you out of the position where you want. So there's a stop limit and a stop market order. Now we know what a market order now and we know what a limit order is. Now there's actually no stop limit order option here. So I'm just it's just going to be market and fill you wherever we are. But stop order for a long position, you want to click sell. You go to the stop button, and because I'm in one contract here, you want to keep the units the same, so one contract, and you just click sell stop. So what this basically means is my stop loss is at 18236 And what that means is if price comes down to that level, it will just get me out of the position, and if we keep going lower, I'm not going to be losing money because that got me out for here. And this is about five points, which, again, that equates to twenty dollars per point times one contract, so that would be about a hundred bucks. I'd lose a hundred bucks if price came to this level here, and I'd get out for minus a hundred dollars. 
Now, let's say I didn't put the stop loss order on and price just kept going down and down. Well, I'd be down 200, 300. And that's why it's important to play stop losses because it, you, there's going to be levels of invalidation where, okay, this level broke. I know I'm wrong. I'm going to get out and I'm, I'm going to stop out. And this is how to, this is the first step that kind of really shows that trading is not gambling, especially if you lose, if you use stop losses. So it's just basically a safeguard. Now, again, if you're in a long position, you want to place a sell stop. Now, what if you're in a short position? So let's take a short real quick. If you're in a short position, you place a buy stop. So you can click it right here, or you can just click create an order, click buy, and then do stop. So this means if you're taking a short or you're selling and price comes up to this level right here, it will buy back your contract and you'll just get out for um, minus, this would be four and a half points, so about 90 bucks. You'll get out for about nine minus $90. And like I said, if you can't watch a screen or you're busy, and you get out for nine minus ninety dollars, and we keep going up. You're gonna be very very thankful you got stopped out because instead of losing like two hundred dollars, you're only losing ninety because you place kind of a safeguard, meaning like oh if we break this level, I think I'm gonna be wrong, therefore I'm gonna get out. And that's kind of the that's kind of how people are gonna trade because when I when I pull up that support and resistance indicator, right when I pull up this. Usually it has this marked. Let me see if I can pull up another one. Has it marked? So it doesn't actually have this high marked. Okay, no, it kind of does. But if I think that this is a support line or a resistance line at this high, I think, okay, if this is resistance, we should not go above it. Therefore, if we do, I'm going to stop out and I'm going to lose $90 because I know if we go above it, we'll probably go higher. So that's kind of like the logic in using a stop loss. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the basics of what a stop loss is. It's basically just think of it as a safeguard to where if it hits a level, you know you're wrong. It's going to get you out for a loss. And again, if a stop loss gets hit, it's always going to be lost. But it's most times you get stopped out, it's typically going to help you. Now, it's not going to help you first. If you use the logic I'm teaching you right now, like support and resistance and all that. And I'm going to explain this in a second. Later in the course, when I start teaching the ICT concepts and the more advanced concepts, the stop losses are going to help you. But the biggest thing a lot of new traders do is this. I'll show you right now. So I tell you guys support and resistance, and now we can apply kind of what we learned. All right. Now watch this. Uh, if I can find the tool. Now, we know this as support, right? Because price just bounces off at 50 times. So where would be a good spot to put a safeguard in place knowing we are wrong? Well, below these lows. Because because price has bounced off so many times, these lows should be protected. They shouldn't go under them. So if I put in a, if I put in a uh, order right here and click buy one, I should put a stop loss order beneath them because I know if we go below them, we're probably going to go much further lower. And what happens is this is what the trading books teach. And this is why a lot of people fail. Okay. The trading books teach this. And what happens is we, you get filled. So let's say you get filled. Let me, let me see if I can move this over real quick and just make it more realistic. We'll put a buy limit here. What happens is you're going to get filled. And what's going to happen is this. You're going to get filled here. You're going to be like, oh, this is great. This, we should balance here at support. And we're going to go under support. And it's going to look like price is going to really break this level. And you're like, oh, shit, I'm going to get stopped out. And then what's going to happen is we're going to go all the way back up. And you're going to be like, you're going to be mad. Because you thought that this was support, but yet price went under it and then back above it. Okay, does that make sense? So to recap, I'm putting a stop loss below all these lows because it looks like strong support. It looks like a trampoline. It looks like we should keep bouncing off of them. And because of that logic, I'm going to put a safeguard below that line because I know we should not go below that line. 
So let's say I just get stopped out here, which let's see if it even fills me. Um, and a lot of times what happens to newer traders is they get stopped out and then we just go right back up and they get mad. And this is why understanding support and resistance is important. So there we go. I got stopped out. Now what's going to happen now or typically what happens is we go back up. Again, this is not a good example to show that, but if it looked like this, this would be a good example. Okay, now how do you avoid this? So as I teach and as the trading books teach, they teach you to buy here, 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 here. Because why? Because this is support. What I do or what I teach and what I'm going to continue teaching is we wait for this to break and then we look for a buy after the support has broken. Now, typically when support breaks, you got breakout traders who are thinking, oh, we broke out. I'm going to take a short because I think we're going to keep dumping and knifing hard because we, we broke below the trampoline. We broke below the support, whatever you want to call it. And the smart money traders will use this liquidity. This is called liquidity. All these stop loss orders that are created and built up here and they'll buy all these orders that get stopped out and then we'll go back up. And then retail traders are like, oh, they're, they're all mad because they got stopped out. And then we pump like 100 points in their direction. And they're like, oh, I just missed out on like $1,000. So that's how we trade. We wait for the support to get broken. We trap all these traders trying to short. We trap all the traders stopping out who think, oh, I think I'm wrong because we broke below this. And then we buy. And the trading books don't teach that. The trading books teach like the buy off support. They teach buy here because we're going to bounce her every time. And although, although you might sometimes, it's not going to help you in the long run. So this is why it's key to understand what a stop loss order is because when I teach stop loss orders, you have to understand that people are put their stops above old highs and old lows. Okay, and, and I'm going to, when I go over trend lines and other patterns, I'm going to tie stop loss orders into a lot of what I teach. And that's, and you need to understand the market in terms of stop loss orders. So an example would be like right here. Think about it. We get a big, big rejection off of here. So someone might consider this a resistance level. Someone might consider this a level where we're going to reject a lot of times. So if I take a sell here and I'm selling here and I'm thinking price is going to go down, where would I place my stop loss if I was wrong? I place my stop above the high. So let's say I take a sell here and let's say I put a stop loss here because I think, oh, if price is truly bearish, I think if we go above this line, I'm going to get stopped out and that's going to be it. I'm going to be done. And I think we're going to go way higher if I get stopped out. I think if I think if we hit this red, I think we're going to go way up. And what happens? We break that level. We stop out these traders right here who put their stop loss there. And then we go down because so many people, they think, oh, if price goes above this high, we're a bunch of people shorted. And remember, how does this wick even created? This this wick or this rejection is created from a bunch of sellers. A bunch of people are selling here. A bunch of algorithms. It's all algorithms. A bunch of algorithms are actually selling here. Okay? So there has to be stop loss orders of some sort above this high because, again, stop loss orders rest at old highs and old lows. So this isn't a high. People are going to put their stop above it, like right here, and this is where they get stopped right here. And then we reverse. And this is where people get mad because they're like, oh, I put my stop loss above the high. We hit the high and then we dump. So technically I was right, but I got stopped out. Now you're probably wondering why I even place a stop loss order in the first place. Well, let me show you. Look at this example right here. If I think price kind of rejects here twice, right? And let's say short this time because I'm like, oh, we rejected here. I'm going to short here. If I don't put a stop loss here above this high, like let's say I don't put a stop loss here, look what could happen. I could lose so much more. So would you rather lose $100 right here where we go up and hit your stop loss or would you rather lose $1,000 by the time we're 100 points higher? I think I'd rather lose 100. So that's why you put a stop loss in the first place. But you have to understand the market in order to play stop losses because you don't want to be the liquidity. Um, I, I joke around all the time and if I buy your stop loss after you get stopped out, you're considered my liquidity because I'm buying your order that you put in. Remember, 
all a stop loss order is, it's a, it's a, it's an order to get in and get out of the market. So again, like I said, if I buy here and I get stopped out here, right? I am selling here. So I'm going to buy right now, but I am technically putting a sell limit here. This is a sell order. It's going to appear on the DOM. You're going to see it on this on this list. It's going to be part of this 248, part of the 231. It's going to be part of whatever. And this is truly a sell order. And that's where, and again, we need sellers, right? We need sellers to buy, right? We need these sellers or else no one could buy. That's how the market moves. Okay, if we don't have stop loss orders or we don't have sellers here, then how can people buy? Because there's no one to buy from. So this is just another contract where someone can buy it from me if we hit it. And what happens is, like I said, if I put a stop loss order here, my friend who may be good at trading, they might see that and they'll be like, hmm, if I think the market goes down and hits a stop loss, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. And he's basically buying my contract that I'm selling to him for a loss. And then price tends to bounce. And he's like, oh, thanks for the liquidity. Um, it's just kind of funny. So, you know, that's what that's what a stop loss order is. Um, again, here's an here's an example where it actually this is a rare occurrence of where resistance works. Now, the funny thing is, this what looks to be like resistance, which I always tell people, if it looks like resistance 10 feet away from your screen, if you can look at your screen and see like multiple rejections, it's very obvious. It's probably a good liquidity pool. And this is, again, support and resistance. It's it's basically referred to as liquidity, okay? Because this is where all the orders rest. And liquidity equals orders, whether that be a market order, whether that be a limit order, whether it be a stop loss order. And you're going to get a lot of stop losses above here, above this high, above this high, above this high. So there's going to be a ton of orders sitting up there. So the funny thing is, even though you got resistance traders shorting here and here, and they're like, oh, I'm way green, and this is going great. What's going to happen later tomorrow is we're going to blast above the high because there's so much liquidity resting up here. There's so many stop loss orders resting above here, and all the books teach, oh, short here because there's resistance. And the market's going to see that. It's going to attract to this liquidity because it's like, oh, I'm not going to let a retail trader win. And I'm going to stop them all out. And what's going to happen is we're going to go back up to those highs and we're just going to completely stop them all out. And then we'll reverse again. And that's where I get in. That's where I get in. I short here. I don't short here. I wait for these guys to be stopped out because they put their stop orders above as a safeguard. And then I short. So that's kind of an introduction. And this is kind of how orders work and, and kind of how to prepare it. Oh my God, with support and resistance. Now this isn't only this is only an introduction. I'm gonna be going over more of this, um, but hopefully this video kind of makes sense. And you might have to watch it a few times, but you'll you'll understand at some point. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, now there is a stop limit order. I just it's not really on here right now. So limit, yeah. There, there's a stop limit order, but it doesn't look like you can actually put one. Um, and as all stop limit is, is it's going to fill you a more of a precise price versus a stop market. It's going to fill you wherever it can, like the lowest price or highest price it can, which again, it doesn't matter in NQ because the spread's so low anyway. So there's barely any slippage Again, slippage just means like what you put your order at versus what you get filled at. So, um, that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions and, uh, I think that's it. By the way, anyone wondering how to get this on your chart? A lot of people are probably going to ask me. Just type in AG FX watermark, and it's basically this indicator, and you can kind of customize it to say whatever you want it to say. So title, subtitle. So you can kind of customize it to say whatever you want to say. So that's going to be it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about orders, and uh, yeah, peace.